Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Dome to Home. Oh, I'm excited for the show. We've got a great show planned for you guys today. Uh, my name is Jeremy. I am a outreach presenter and navigator at Fisk, and uh, as some of you might recognize me, I've been doing a lot of these Dome to Home shows, controlling everything you see over here on the Dome. Uh, above me, we've got my friend Tara. Hey there. <laughs> yeah, my name is Tara. I'm a presenter at Fisk. I'm also a planetary scientist and a CU alum and have been doing these Dome to Homes now for a few months as well. We're super excited that you guys are tuning in for this one because it is our last episode of the summer, which is Ooh. awesome and kind of sad. But don't worry, we'll be back in the fall. I got some more information about that for you later. So stick around till the end for sure. But today we are here to talk about the upcoming meteor shower, which is super exciting. It's actually happening right now. It's not peaked yet. So this is still the early days of the meteor shower. In particular, this is the Perseids meteor shower. So I thought we'd start by talking about what exactly a meteor shower even is. What causes a meteor shower? Well, obviously there's meteors. You can probably guess by the name, but meteor showers are actually caused by comets. It's all of the dust and junk that is left behind as a comet's moving through space. So you've probably seen pictures like this of comets, and you see it's got that really big dust tail coming off behind it. Now that dust tail is exactly what it sounds like. It's all of the dust that's flying off of that comet. So as the comet goes around the sun and makes its orbits, it's leaving a trail behind it, kind of like Pigpen. You remember Pigpen? leaving this dusty trail behind it. And as the Earth goes around the sun, it moves through that dusty trail and all of those little bits of dust hit our atmosphere and burn up and it makes those bright flashes of light. So that's what, and actually, if you look at the picture here on the very bottom that Jeremy's put up, that is a comet called Swift Tuttle. It's a fun name. And it's actually the same comet that creates the Perseid meteor showers. So that's pretty cool. That's the actual comet that we're gonna be uh, blowing through all of its leftover dust and stuff. Which is pretty cool. Did you guys see the Neowise comet? Did anybody get to check that one out? Jeremy, yeah. did you see it? Oh yeah, I was out there every single night. Most of the nights, unfortunately, it was cloudy. It was kind of bad conditions from where I was at, but I was able to get a couple of really cool pictures of it. So that was really cool. First comet I've ever seen. Awesome, me too. I was pretty excited about it. So you guys, if you saw that comet, you probably saw its big blue tail coming off behind it. So, like I said, as the Earth moves around the sun, it plows through that dusty stuff. And it's because these comets are orbiting around the sun, they've got their own orbits. And so we're passing through that dust cloud at about the same time every year. The dust cloud doesn't really move, it stays where it is. So as Earth moves through it, we're going around the sun in our yearly orbit, and we're passing through that stuff every year. Now, Jeremy, tell us a little bit about these lines here. What did you just put up for us? Yeah, so the pinkish looking lines um, are the orbit paths of the short period comets, and the, longer, the bluer looking lines are kind of all the long period comets that we have uh, pin, you know, pinpointed the locations of. And so you can kind of see some of the blue ones are kind of orbiting right around that sun. Um, but these, it, the orbits look a little bit different, uh, obviously, if you're here on Earth. Um, but yeah, you could tell us some more about that, Tara. Yeah, so like I said, those comets are moving around the sun. They're short period comets that are pretty close into the solar system, and they go around the sun pretty quickly. And then there's long period comets, which have really, really big orbits. And so it takes them a really long time to go around the sun. Like you probably heard about the Neowise comet after it's gone for, for, uh, from our view, we're not gonna see it again for what, like 6,000 years or something like that? Yeah, I think it's gonna be a long time. 6,800, so I'm not sure if any of us are gonna be around uh, to check, the, check it out again. So hopefully everybody was able to get out there and take a look at it. Yeah. So, so these long period comets take a really long time to go around the sun and the short period ones don't take quite as long. That's really the only difference. Now in particular, we're here to talk about the next meteor shower, which is that Perseids meteor shower. Now meteor showers are always named after the constellation they originate from. That just means when you look in the sky, there's one point where these meteors all seem to be coming from. And it's usually, in or nearby a constellation. And so that's how we make it kind of easy to find. 
is we name them after the constellation. So that way, all you have to do is look for the constellation and then you'll know where those meteors are coming from. Now, since this one is the Perseid meteor shower, it's coming from the constellation of Perseus. We're gonna show you where that is. Jeremy's gonna set the sun. We're moving through time here. Yeah, so you might've noticed uh, we have this little overlay of uh, Farron Field on uh, the University of Colorado Boulder's campus. Um, and I kind of flipped the dome around for you guys. Uh, so now the bottom of your screen is gonna be looking north. Uh, the west is going to be on your left side of your screen, and the east should be on your right side, uh, just to make these this uh, meteor shower and these constellations a little bit easier to see for you guys. Yeah. Good. All right, so here we are in the evening time. Yeah, we're at about, uh, just about coming up on 10 o'clock right now. All right. You'll see this pinkish line that I've turned on is the uh, official boundary of the constellation here. And then as it orbits up, I'll turn on the Perseus constellation lines for you. Yeah, that's something not a lot of people always realize is that constellations, according to the International Astronomical Unit, uh, the IAU, it's not the actual kind of stick figure lines that most people think of, it's actually a region in space this whole area that encompasses those stars and those little stick figures, but also some other stuff too, like you see here. The constellation that we think of as Perseus is inside of the region, which is the official constellation of Perseus. So there he is, you can see him, he's gonna be off to the northeast and just above the horizon. And he's kind of, I think it's kind of shaped like a, like a wishbone with feet a little bit. I can see it. Yeah. It's supposed to be a great warrior. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe the artwork might help with that a little bit. Eh, not so much. Eh. That's the fun thing about constellations. They kind of look like whatever you think they look like. I think it's a wishbone with feet. So there's Perseus, you can see him in the northeast, and maybe this is not a super familiar constellation for you. It's not one that we really talk about a whole lot but it's close to a couple of other constellations that you might be more familiar with, and you can use those to help find Perseus. Now, the first one I'm gonna point out is one of the more famous constellations, the Big Dipper. Now, the Big Dipper is usually pretty easy to find in our sky because everybody knows about what it looks like. You're probably familiar with the shape. Its stars are always really bright, so even if you're in the city, you can see it pretty well. Jeremy's put it up there for us. It's going to be a little low on the horizon. But if you wait some, it'll move. That's the fun part. Yeah, so we're moving kind of into the, the early hours of the next morning on the 12th now. We're about 3 a.m. And you can see it's still kind of down beneath that cutout. And I can maybe take that cutout down and make it a little bit easier to see where that is. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, so this is actually, we are on August 11th slash 12th, Jeremy. Yep, we are at 3 a.m. on August 12th right now from Boulder, okay. Colorado. Excellent. So yeah, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, this is about what your sky is going to look like. And that peak date, August 11th, night of the 11th slash 12th. So that's going to be the best time to see this meteor shower. That's when it's going to be the most active. So if you can find the Big Dipper there on your Northern Horizon, one way to look at per to find Perseus, if you can't just, you know, draw the little connection with your eyes, there's these two stars on the end of the cup. Now, if you were to draw a line with those stars going straight up, you would get to a very important star. That one right there. That star is called Polaris, also known as the North Star. So that's not always a really good one to keep in mind. That star always points in the direction of north. So if you're ever lost in the woods or the desert or out at sea or something, and you can find that north star, you can tell which direction you're going. Very handy. But for this, you can find that star Polaris and then look just kind of up and to the right. And Perseus is going to be right up there. You can see little streaks of meteors we have coming out of there. Super fun. 
Now, if that Big Dipper is a little too low on your horizon, maybe there's mountains in the way or buildings or something like that, there's another cool constellation that we can use uh, to help find Perseus, and that's the constellation of Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia kind of looks like a W or a three, depending on which way you're facing. That's our beautiful princess, obviously, right? So Cassiopeia is up there and it's very obviously a W shape or a three shape. So that's another easy one. If you can find that and look just below it, then you'll find Perseus as well. He's just right there underneath her. Pretty cool, huh? So that's a couple of ways that you can help find Perseus. And if you wanna go out a couple nights ahead of time and try it and see if you can find it, definitely worth doing, just in case. Now, if you wanna get a really good look at this meteor shower, there's a couple of tips we have for you for your best meteor viewing conditions. Now, one of those is to get somewhere that's really, really dark. Now, if you're here in Boulder or somewhere kind of around this area, this is about what your sky is gonna look like. You can see quite a few stars, but it may not be as dark as it could be if you were to get somewhere like way away from the city, out in the mountains or out on the plains your sky will look a little more like this. That should be a little bit better for you. You can see a lot of stars that way. You can also see the Milky Way there. So if there's too many stars and you can't find the constellations at all, you can always look for the Milky Way too. If you can see that Milky Way, you've got Perseus right there in the middle of it. Now you also might wanna get out a little bit early to go look for this meteor shower. Sometime after dark, obviously, but the moon's gonna be coming up later in the evening around like midnight, one o'clock. Probably not that, hopefully not that big <laughs> in your sky. If you ever see that, call somebody, cause that's a problem. We got a big issue. But the moon's gonna be coming up. About what time are we at, Jeremy? Yeah, we're still uh, right at 316 it looks like, so. Okay. Early in the morning. So you so probably you don't want to stay up that late anyways. Yeah. So if you get out there in the earlier or er, earlier in the uh in the night, you should be able to get a good view of this meteor shower. Yeah, so like 10, 11, 12 o'clock, you should be good. And the moon's only gonna be a crescent moon, it's only at about a quarter, so it won't be nearly as bad as it could be, but it's gonna be right next to the constellation. So if you want to avoid that moon, you want to get out probably before midnight is gonna be your best bet. Now, under the absolute best conditions, you're going to see about 50 to 75 meteors an hour. That's like one a minute, which is really, really good for a meteor shower. Normally, it's much less than that. So if you're in the city or somewhere close to a city, you probably won't see quite as many. But if you're out somewhere super, super dark, you might get that maximum of 75 an hour, which would be really exciting. Now, one of the things that we also mentioned a little bit earlier is that if you get out and maybe the constellation is too low in the sky and you can't really see it, or you can't find the Big Dipper to find the constellation of Perseus, all you have to do is wait a little bit because those stars and those constellations are gonna move over the course of the night. We can kind of show you what that's gonna look like. So we've turned on the trails for you so you can see how these stars are moving in our sky. So you can see stars just like the sun kind of rise in the east and set in the west. So they're moving that way across our sky over the course of the evening. So if there's something that's supposed to be in the northeast that you can't see, just wait a little bit. Eventually it'll come back up. And that gives you an excuse to kind of lay around and just watch the sky for a while. Which exactly. Is never a bad thing. Now I see we had a question from Susan here who wants to know, do we recommend any apps for phones to help us find constellations? That is an excellent question. And there's a couple different ones. You can usually look these up, um, depending on the phone that you have, there'll be different ones. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are not. Uh, there's one called Star Rover, which is uh, really highly recommended. That's a good one. Let me, I think, just check mine real quick. I use one called Starwalk. It's another really great app. It does um, sort of augmented reality stuff so you can 
point it, like hold it up in the sky and sort of overlay the stars that you're seeing so you can actually tell where you're pointed. And it's got a whole database of things that you can look up. If you click on it, it'll take you to the Wikipedia page and you can learn all about it. So that's Star Walk. That one I have a lot of experience with and it's really good. Um, there's another one, Sky View is one that I've heard of as well that a lot of people use. Um, that one's got cool things like night mode um, and it also has a lot of information about the things that you're looking at. Those are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head, but a quick Google search, you can probably quite find quite a few. Quite a few. <laughs> but um, yeah, that Star Walk one is the one that I use and I like it a lot. That's a really good one. It looks like Ramey, our question master, might have put that in the chat for you guys as well. So you can pull that up and take a look. Now that's really about all we had to say about the meteor viewing experience, but I wanted to see if anybody had questions, anything else you were wondering about, about meteors or meteor showers or comets or constellations or whatever. We're here to answer your questions. Yeah, go ahead and drop them in the chat there. Or if anybody has any awesome uh, photos of Neowise as it came by a couple weeks ago. That would be cool too. I'm always up for comet pictures. Tara, when we're waiting for uh, some of these questions to come in, uh, what are your plans for seeing this meteor shower? What's a, an astronomer like you, where would you, you find yourself? Ooh. I haven't made any official plans yet. Usually um, we like to go out west. So we live here in Boulder, but um, like for the Neowise Comet, since it was really bright and easy to see, we drove up to, uh, what's it called? Realization Point on Flagstaff Mountain. That was a good one because you're kind of looking off towards the north away from the city. Um, there's a lot of great places up in Nederland as well if you want to take a real long drive. Um, the Hesse Trailhead is one of my favorite places to take my telescope and go look at stars and constellations and meteors and things. So if it's not too crowded, I would definitely recommend going up around Hesse or up to Nederland somewhere. You get far enough away from the city, there's plenty of trees to block the light. So you get really good viewing. You can see the Milky Way from up there, which is super cool. How about you? You got any plans, Jeremy? Yeah, not not uh, anything nailed down quite yet, but probably along the, some similar lines. You know, anywhere away from lights is good for me. So <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Thanks. We'll see what's what's on my in my schedule. But you know, middle of the night, there's usually not too much going on, so I can usually find an excuse exactly. to get up to the mountains around that that time. There you go. <laughs> Let's see, Susan also wants to know, what is the best time here in Colorado to see these meteors? Excellent question. So August 11th is the official peak of the meteor shower. So that's gonna be the day when they're gonna be the most meteors, it'll be the strongest and probably easiest to see is that night of August 11th, which is a Tuesday, I believe. Yes, next, exactly a week from today. So that's gonna be the best date. Either a day or two on either side of that is probably gonna be good as well. Um, and like we said, you want to get out probably before midnight, somewhere between like 10 and 12, so that you don't have that moon in the way interfering with your viewing. So you get that really good dark sky. Yeah, good so question. I went ahead and rewinded time on the dome here. So uh, you can maybe see the moon just went back down below the horizon. Uh, we're at about, uh, let's see, 1137 right now. Um, so that should be a good kind of time where... Uh, you know, the location you're going to be looking is probably high enough uh, above the horizon to get a good view of that. And you won't won't have that moonlight flooding out the sky yet. Yeah. And if you miss this one or if it's cloudy and we don't get to see one, there are some more this year that are happening. There may not be quite as big and bright as this one, but there's the Orionids that come up in the fall around October, November time. That's another really good one. Um, and the Leonids at the end of the year, in like the end of November, that's another really good one. Um, there's a website called amsmeteors.org, which lists all the upcoming meteor showers. So you can check that out, amsmeteors.org. Um, and that's got a lot of great information. It'll tell you when things are up, when's the best time to see them, where they're going to be coming from, and even how many you might see. See, any other good questions?
Hmm, let's see. see Nothing else? Got anybody coming? Any good through? meteor jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I think we might have used them up all on uh, one of our previous shows. I, I think sl- we did. I was slacking in the joke department on these on this show. So if you want some good comment and meteor jokes, go a couple weeks back to the meteor show that we did then. Yeah, exactly. we had some great ones. <laughs> Not really. They were all terrible. They were great for dome to home astronomy shows. I, I thought <laughs> we do what we can. Yeah. Well, if nobody has any other questions, we will probably just go ahead and sign off for today. Um, Again, don't come back next week because we won't be here. (laughs) This is our last show of this summer series, but we are starting back up in the fall, uh, probably around mid-September, second or third week in there. We don't know for sure yet, but keep an eye on our website and our YouTube page. Um, And in between, All of the Dome to Home shows that we've done from the spring and the summer are still available on our website and on our YouTube channel. So you can check those out if you're really jonesing for some Dome to Home action. We've got plenty of videos there that you can watch. Um, Check out our website, www.colorado.edu slash FISC. We'd also love to hear any suggestions that you might have for programming or themes or things that you might like to see in the fall. We love hearing from you guys. So leave us a comment or shoot us an email, whether it's for your school or just for fun. We always like talking to people. So uh, leave us some information if you like. Otherwise, we'll be signing off for the summer and hopefully we'll see you guys again in the fall. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. You guys are what what makes these uh, shows possible and we do it all for you. So. Uh, Yeah, until next time, stay safe out there. Go look up at the nighttime sky and keep exploring for us. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all.